In this video, I'm gonna show you three of my favorite leg training exercises that you can do even if you have a disc herniation, disc bulge, disc rupture. These are my go-to three exercises. I personally ruptured my L5 S1 disc eight plus years ago, never had it fixed, never had medical intervention when it comes to surgery or medication to dull the pain today. I'm free of that stuff and I use training specifically. I do smart training and I wanna give you three of my top exercises that you can use on your leg day. If you've been skipping legs, if you are afraid to train your lower body, I completely understand. I wanna give you some hope, I wanna give you some strategies you can use, and you're gonna start with these three exercises. If you have been following along for the past couple of weeks now, we're talking all things herniations, disc herniations and exercises, overcoming the fear, building confidence, building strength and endurance back in your body despite any kind of spinal abnormalities that you may have. If you're like, this is great, I love all the content, I love the disc herniation focus, but I want more. I want to learn how to train, I want to learn how to get stronger, build strength despite my situation. These exercises have been fun, but I want to take it to the next level. I want to offer you a seven day free pass into my Smart Strength membership. This is hands down my most popular access to all of my training, all of my ways of programming, building strength, despite any kind of history of chronic back pain, whether you have been fused or you have not gone to the doctor, gotten operated on, and you have chronic back pain, you want to build strength, check out my Smart Strength membership. It's www.fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash smart strength. For this series, I'm offering a seven day free pass. So you can jump into it, try it out for an entire week. Let me know what you think. If you don't like it, hop out. So if you're looking to take your training to an, the next level, have your programming done for you, this might be the best thing for you. This is actually the third video in this series. We talked about the three rules of exercising with disc herniations. The first week, second week, last week was the th core exercises, the core training for disc herniations, ruptures, bulk and now in this third video, we're talking about the three exercises for your lower body. All right, so the first exercise I wanna show you real quick is the hang squat. There's a couple ways you can do this one. I like to do it with dumbbells hanging, hang squat, two dumbbells. You can also do it with a single dumbbell if you have heavy enough weights. And there's some other modifications you can do to this one. I'm gonna show you just a basic hang squat and I'll kind of bounce around some different options as I'm kind of breaking it down. So what I'll do is I'll grab my dumbbells. The key thing with this is how you're hanging the dumbbells. That's the essential. So to keep a good balanced weight, I prefer to hang them inside. So I'm almost like I'm taking my, my palms facing the sides of my legs and I'm turning them in and letting them kind of rest on my thighs, right? From here, as best I can, I roll my shoulder blades back and down and get my hips or my legs in a position that is a normal squat for me. From there, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop into my squat and allow the weight to almost sink back. Like I'm trying to let the weight just kind of swing back into a natural position and not try to hold it. They're just being hung there. So the tops of those dumbbells almost are like they're going back towards your heels. That's what feels the most comfortable, especially if you have a sensitive low back, trying to maintain a neutral position, nice core brace like that. Now. If you're getting really heavy, you can do that with 95 pound dumbbells. If you have lighter weight, you're not as strong, you could do it lighter. Another variation is just simply holding it like this, holding it down here, similar to a goblet squat. I prefer to have the weight down here because as I go down, I like to move that weight back. It just feels better on my lower back. I feel I have more control over that weight. I'm not trying to focus on my core strength with this exercise, it's simply a way to target the lower body. Now, the other way you can do a single dumbbell hang squat is if you have two platforms, you can stack uh, plates up. Like if you have like 45 pound plates at your gym or at your home, you can stack them up. So when you step up onto these plates, you have a gap. So when you're coming down, you can hold that dumbbell like this and you can sit down into that squat and the dumbbell is gonna sink into that gap. So you're actually bringing your body up off the ground a little bit and allowing the gap between your two platforms to act as that swing room for your dumbbell. So the second exercise that I love to do, especially if you have a sensitive low back, disc herniation, disc rupture, disc bulge, is the static 
reverse lunge. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it too difficult. If you can challenge your body, challenge your lower body uh, in a way that you can add weight, you can progress, build strength and endurance without compromising anything or making it too complicated, that's where you want to be, especially if you have a sensitive low back. So what I'll do, two variations. There's just a standard way, which I will hold my dumbbell on one side of my body and I'm gonna step back Okay, again with the palm, I like to face it in because as I'm going down, I like the weight to be the center of gravity, right? I want it to be in the center and I want it to be balanced. So not like this or like this. You can do those. You can try this way here. If you'd like, me personally, I prefer to hang it right between my legs. It keeps it even. So from the side without support, I'll grab my dumbbell as heavy as I want. I'll step back. Essentially here, as I'm coming down, it's the same thing as a single leg lunge, but I'm focusing on the me being back. So I'm gonna relax, come down, and back up. Trying to relax the lower back, not act as my lower back being the core, but bracing here, and back up. A little trick that I learned a long time ago when it comes to sensitivity in the low back is oftentimes as we come down, due to like hip flexor tightness, people tend to kind of like over arch or they're trying to protect their lower back so they overextend. One thing that you can do, you have the freedom to do, is cut, take a lean forward, right? So you're taking some load off of your lower back. So you're coming down and the angle on my lower back is not as extreme. I don't have to try to uh, try to maintain this perfect, super neutral, super upright position because that might be compressing those discs and causing some sensitivity right now for you. So if that's the case, it's okay to cheat a little bit, come forward and have more of a forward leaning position. Other variation is just like the cheater or the supported way. Same thing, I'll grab onto something, focusing on allowing this cage or this rig to act as my stability, come down, back up. There's nothing wrong with this, especially if you're getting heavier and heavier, if you're still trying to work coordination, still trying to build endurance, still kind of fearful around lower body training and a, and a disc issue, having that support is totally fine. All right, so the third top lower body exercise training um, for disc herniations, ruptures, any kind of disc sensitivity, disc injury, is the banded single leg leg press. Now. The way I do these leg presses is the band is basically stapled to the ground and I'm pressing off and away. So you can look at it as like a single leg lunge, but I like to do these with the band. It really hammers the quads and I'm gonna show you how to do them. So take your band, you can go as heavy as you want. If you go lighter, obviously you'll wanna play around with a higher number of reps. If you're going heavy, you can go low reps. Find a formula that works best for you. So I'm gonna take my band put it under my foot like a dis, and the further I grab towards my foot, obviously the more tension I'm gonna build up. So from here, I'm gonna make sure my shoulder blades are back and down, I'm in a good neutral position, I'm not going from a rounded to an overextended trying to pull it up. The idea is driving through your foot, driving through your leg and pushing back. So it's not so much coming straight up, but you're kind of coming up and back, pressing with this leg. So what I'll do, hold my foot here, Get set, nice neutral position. I'm just gonna drive up and down, up and down. So essentially, I'm almost acting like I'm trying to, I'm going down an, an escalator. Think of an escalator where it's a gradual descent and you're coming up or going down at an angle. It's not an elevator where you're going straight up like this. You're, I'll show you from the side here what I mean by that. So elevators go up and they go down, up and down. I want you to think more of like an escalator going back here and down, back and down. Make it a little bit harder, drive here, drive and here. You can adjust as depending on how sensitive your lower back is. If being too neutral or being too upright is too much, you can always cheat on the uh, bands, come down a little bit tighter, build that tension up and lean forward a little bit and keep that forward lean. But if done right, with enough resistance, they'll grow, they'll get stronger. And that is it, my top three lower body training exercises. If you have a disc herniation, rupture, bulge, any kind of disc issue, sensitivity, looking for a safe, confident way of training your lower body, do those three exercises. Now, my question for you is, 
If you did see one of the exercises that is, that is your go-to exercise, let me know which one you prefer to do instead. There are lots of lower body exercises that you can do. These three are just three of my top ones. There's more. So if you know one that is better or as good as the ones that we talked about today, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to see what you guys are doing out in the field, in your gym, in your home gyms, training, getting stronger, building confidence, regardless of your pain history. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode.